When companies act on misinformation, the results can be costly. Think Ford Edsel or New Coke. How can senior managers reduce the impact of human bungles? Here to shed some light on the matter is INSEAD Assistant Professor of Decision Science, Miguel Lobo. Miguel, welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you, Jane. Your research paper, Human Judgment is Heavily Tailed, suggests people make big mistakes in their estimates much more frequently than expected. How often are these mistakes made? Well, we all make very big mistakes. The question we ask is, relative to the model that we use, that, that is widely used for thinking about the distribution of errors, which is the normal curve, the bell-shaped curve that everybody knows, we asked for mistakes that are far off in the tail, that are extremely uncommon. Uh, we asked how often do those mistakes actually happen? And we, we asked questions, for instance, for a, an, an error which is so large that according to the statistical model should happen only, say, one out of a thousand. So an extremely rare event. You completely um, misestimate or do a completely wrong forecast about your sales in such a way that it should be uh, one out of a thousand event, a mistake that should only happen one out of a thousand. It turns out that those big mistakes happen ten times more often than what would be predicted by the normal distribution, by the bell curve. With all the information available today, why is human error still responsible for such big mistakes? The thing is, we cannot avoid using human judgment. Human judgment is actually incredibly valuable. There's all sorts of situations in business where there's no replacement for human judgment. Uh, when um, you are entering a new market, when you are developing a new drug, the situation is so unique and so particular that you have to rely on human judgment. So in some sense, it's not that they are still responsible for so many errors. They will always be. It's the best information we have in many cases. The question is how do we make it more precise? What kind of processes, can, what kind of training can we put in place to make that information more valuable and more accurate? How do we complement it with quantitative statistical data? How do we make the two work together? Um, and, uh, and do we understand, I mean, how do we develop a better understanding about the human process, the processes of human judgment that go into those forecasts, those estimates, be they sales forecasts or forecasts for the effectiveness of a drug or for development of an oil field, whatever it happens to be. Your research involved assessing the forecasts of 50 economists. Were you surprised by the variation in their responses and by some of the big mistakes they made? Yes, there's a number of surprises. One surprise we find is that looking at data from professional economists doing uh, uh, forecasts for quantities that they understand very well, you know, they're professionally trained in this, they're the best in the business, uh, on the one hand. On the other hand, looking at very simple tasks that we asked MBA students to do, uh, to estimate quantities about which they know very little. Now, the standard deviation of the errors, that is how, by how far off you are from the, the actual number, will change a lot depending on how difficult the task is. But what we find is a surprising regularity in the structure of the errors, that is, how often do very large mistakes happen. And this turns out to be something that is fundamental about human judgment, whether you are looking at uh, things about which you have a lot of professional expertise or things you know very little about, uh, the structure, so how often these very large sort of black swan type of errors happen turns out to be surprisingly regular. Accurate forecasts and estimates are vital to making important business decisions. How can senior managers make sure they get the right information? There, there are a number of answers to that question. The first is make sure you have enough information. One of the strongest biases, you know, very well documented now over the past 10, 20 years, is the bias for overconfidence. We tend to believe that we know more than we do. We tend to overestimate the quality of our knowledge compared to the quality of other people's knowledge. We tend to greatly underestimate the diversity of knowledge and information that there is across people. So we tend to rely either or too much on our own information, on our own judgment, or when we seek out other people's informations, we tend to focus too much on just one single person. We try to identify the best expert and rely only on that one expert's uh, judgment or information. Whereas in fact, there's a lot of information out there. Any given expert will probably have 
much less to contribute than what you would have to maybe not having the best expert, but if you asked 10 different people by taking the average in some way out of those 10 people, by collecting information from 10 different people, you would probably would end up with a much more reliable forecast just than by just seeking out the one single expert. So that's the main answer to that question. Make sure you spend enough time collecting information from a diverse set of sources. The second answer is make sure you have good process for that. There's typically a lot more information in your organization than, than that, 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 you know, that typically then we give people credit for. And can you combine several forecasts into one? We find that as a rule of thumb, doing the following works very well across a lot of different situations, which is take the average of all the estimates, take the median of all the estimates, and then take the midpoint between the average and the median. This turns out to be a very simple rule that for some complicated statistical reasons uh, works very well across a broad range of situations. Are big companies now putting policies in, in place to mitigate the risk of human error? There's certainly much more awareness of, number one, the need to complement judgment with data whenever possible. Number two, of having good process for making use of human judgment more and more companies are paying attention to those issues and putting process in place for that. Still probably not as much as they should, I think there's still an enormous scope for improvement in, um, in a lot of businesses and in a lot of industries for that, but you, you definitely see awareness um, in, of, of those issues increasing. Miguel, thank you for being with us on NZ Knowledge. Thank you, Jane.